assuming you've already seen the first two episodes in this series, but if you haven't, this video contains spoilers for episode three, season two of Netflix's Shadow and Bone. Now the episode starts with Nikolai revealing the hummingbird, and for some reason, it only takes one squalor manning the sails to get it airborne. Sus. And Kaz sends Jesper and Wylan on a mission together, and I gotta admit, I love how much of an ally Kaz is in the show. He really said, that's my ship and I'm gonna make it sail, and we stand him for that. We also get to see him mark Nina as an official crow. What you did tonight made you a crow. Keep a low profile. You'll be in Becca's sights now. Then Alina and crew enter the fold, and Alina genuinely tries to get rid of the fold then and there. And this pissed me off. In the books, she knew she wasn't strong enough yet, so why did they have to make her even try? This was dumb. They don't go Volker hunting, which was honestly a nice change. And Alina kind of has a vision of the Darkling, but it's more of a flashback, really, so it's not as fun. Alina's light goes out, everyone gets attacked, and they all crash land on the other side of the fold. Nikolai reveals himself to the army, and I love that they included this, Alina punches him in the face. Then we catch our first glimpse of David, but he's on the wrong side. And don't get me wrong, I loved the David and Jenya content, but I would have appreciated accuracy even more. Meanwhile, Alina and crew are headed to the spinning wheel. Yeah, the spinning wheel. The place they only go to after the palace is attacked and they have nowhere else to go. That spinning wheel. And they ride a horse. Because it's not in the mountains. Because that would be ridiculous. And as soon as we get there, we see that they recast Nadia. Now don't get me wrong, I love the new Nadia, she did great, but I also love consistency, and I'm dying to know why they changed this. We also get our first look at Adric, who is way too old. They cast a full grown adult. <laughs> and the sibling relationship between him and Nadia gave me the ick. It is everything everyone makes fun of when writers try to write siblings. Cut to the crows, Jesper and Wylan have a mini heist to find out where Pekka is funneling money. And they find out Pekka has a kid, but they get caught and they have to pretend to be piano fixers so that they can get away. It's all very funny, but while this isn't book accurate, it is in character, so I'll let it slide. Then Kaz and Nesh have the bathroom scene from Crooked Kingdom, and again, Freddie Carter absolutely nailed Kaz with all the lingering eye contact and dramatic pauses. He did amazing. But then they almost kiss and let me tell you, I was screaming at the screen. Don't worry though, Nina interrupts them so we're safe. For now. Kaz leaves and goes to Perhaskel asking for men for a job. Perhaskel says no. And then we get yet another scene from Crooked Kingdom where Kaz takes on the whole of the club and wins. And as much as I hate that we're getting Crooked Kingdom content now, I did enjoy those scenes. And then Inej fights the weird taxidermy guy and kills him. I don't know, this whole subplot was something I didn't need. Back to the Darkling, he's asking his mommy about the Firebird, and he's using his manners like a good little boy. Please. But you know, when she tells him nothing, he cuts off her finger and he uses it to amplify some random Grisha. And this was just another unnecessary and inaccurate subplot. Nikolai proposes a political marriage to Alina. She says no, but that she also needs more time to think about it. And this made me nervous, but it still has the potential to be accurate. So I'm just gonna choose not to think about it. David and Jenya try to escape the Darkling together, but Jenny gets caught and ruined. And while Jenny's ruination is accurate, and I like the whole she was trying to escape the Darkling is why it happened plotline, I'm still angry that David is there at all. Jenya is a strong, independent woman, and she doesn't need a man to give her the strength to run away from the Darkling. She did that shit on her own, and the show took that away from her, and I hate it. I also don't like that Jesper and Wyland told Kaz about Albie Rollins because that took away from Kaz's character. Like, yes, he already knew about the kid, which I appreciated, but in the books, Kaz told nobody about Pekka's kid and saved it for an epic reveal at the end. And we were robbed of that. Nina is visiting Hellgate to get a message to Matthias, but instead she runs into Pekka Rollins. He offers her a deal to betray Brecker for a chance of getting Matthias out. 
Now, obviously this is leading to a double cross where Nina says she'll help Pekka, but in reality, she never switched sides to begin with. And I also hated this because it was supposed to be Wylan. Wylan was supposed to have that moment of, oh my God, he betrayed them, but it was actually all part of the plan. Ridiculous. Finally, we end the episode with Alina going to Nikolai in the middle of the night to give him her answer to his proposal. The episode cuts before we get an answer, but it's so obviously yes. You don't show up on someone's bedroom doorstep in the middle of the night to tell them no. And this pissed me off because Alina was never supposed to say yes. She gets proposed to three times in the books and not once does she say yes. Like, what were they thinking? Actually, I'll tell you what they were thinking. They weren't. Ooh, this season is getting more and more inaccurate as we go. And I've got to be honest, I don't love the direction we're headed in. But what did you all think? Did you like the changes? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And like and subscribe and hit all those buttons so you can be up to date when I post my review of episode four coming soon. And as always, thanks for watching.